Just a quick reminder that if you want to support Concepts and Legends, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also show your support by using our TCG affiliate link for any and all of your magic needs by using the link you see here or below in the description. Any and all help is greatly appreciated and helps us bring you more videos like the one that is starting right now. Greetings, citizens of the multiverse. What's more impressive than becoming a magic artist? Becoming one in your mid-30s, which is exactly what today's interviewee, Pindersky, did. But before we get into the interview, remember to smash the like button if you can find it, because I don't see one on my keyboard at all. Anyway, let's get to the interview. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, what's interesting about you is that you are a late in life uh, illustrator, right? correct? That is very correct, yeah. Now, what you you originally, you went into graphic design as a career instead of, of pursuing illustration. What made you choose that back then? What made you go into that line of work? Oh, my. Uh, so I did, I did some drawing in high school. Uh, I was okay. I mean, um, and I was going to uh, either choose graphic design or... Um, uh, illustration or animation coming out of uh, high school. And I opted, I opted to choose graphic design because it's a very long story, but it was just my mom and I at the time and uh, we'd had no other family. And so rather than kind of leaving her behind, I opted to stay local and I chose uh, graphic design, uh, which was, you know, in, a, in London, Ontario. So rather than moving to Toronto or wherever to pursue uh, illustration or uh, animation, um, I opted the safe route. Uh, and then, so yeah, so that's what I kind of did. Well, I mean, that's very noble of you to, to do that. I mean, it's, it's uh, it proves that you very much have a lot of love for, you know, family and your mother. I mean, that's, that's very, very heartfelt. Yeah, I think the, in retrospect, I think there was also maybe a bit of fear there. I mean, ah. growing up with just her my entire life and having no other family, uh, maybe I was a little afraid to venture off on my own. Uh, perhaps I was a little too immature back then to really grab life by the horns and kind of make it my own. So, yeah. <laughs> so you you did uh, graphic design for what, 17 years, was it? Yeah, uh, I don't remember exactly how long in my career it was when I started to get back into illustration at that point, but yeah, that sounds about right. And you hadn't drawn anything like uh, as far as fantasy goes for that entire time. For, yeah, pretty much. I hadn't drawn anything. Yeah. Now, how do you, I mean, your work is great. And so how does somebody, because you know, there's that whole, you know, the 10,000 hours kind of thing. Um, how do you, how did you manage to, sort of like because especially from your early stuff to the stuff that you're making now it's like you're caught up what do you think was the the a reason or how did you do that it, it seems like that would be an impossibility that's a really good question um i owe i think to where i am now i owe credit to a lot of people um my however my overarching strategy was especially because I was starting later, that did give me some advantages. Um, How do you mean? Uh, having a job already means I had an income. Okay. So I, there wasn't that, which could have been a bad thing as well, because you know when you're, if you don't have money and you really need that as a goal, I mean you can be really motivated to learn really quickly. But I had that going for myself anyway. So my overarching strategy was to only kind of learn what I needed to for the next illustration. So I didn't learn, you know, a lot of architecture or I didn't learn all my anatomy. I just learned enough to get me through to the next illustration, um, which were all personal back then. Uh, I was setting personal goals. And then with my next illustration, I would try and push myself a little bit further and I would learn that extra five or 10 percent to get me there eventually you know things began to stick in my mind and i developed um, some sort of memory 
uh, in my visual library, and I was able to kind of uh, put the building blocks into place, so to speak, and uh, eventually gather, garnered enough knowledge to be able to make su successful paintings. Okay. And so, and so, and then also, or do you mean like in a sense that you also were able to sort of tap into uh, when you were younger and the amount of drawing that you did back then, because you drew very extensively, you were sort of able to connect those bridges and in addition to what you've learned? I almost, I don't want to say I started from scratch, but in a lot of ways, I feel I did start from scratch because I drew so long ago. And I mean, how good are you in high school anyway? If you're not very good. I mean, it's, you know, it's usually, I mean, I'd say the majority of people are probably not very good, but there are the exceptions. Yeah, I mean, I was perhaps okay with in the context of my school, um, but I was by no means, in all honesty, it was no means a good drawer. I was good for my school. So at least that's what I believe now. So Okay. Um, do you ever, do you have any of your old, old pieces that you've saved? Anything from those before times? You know what? I don't. Oh, that's a shame. Um, I had maybe a bit of a mid thirties life crisis <laughs> and I moved. Um, I won't get into it, but I had a bit of a midlife thirties crisis and I purged everything from my life at that point from before, which included mm -hmm. all my drawings, all my art. It went into a dumpster. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I point, understand that. At that point, I had no um, plan on ever drawing again. When I purged everything, I just wanted no memory of it. So, right. uh, yeah, so maybe a worm is looking at it right now or eating it, who knows? Well, that's, I mean, I understand that. I mean, I've I've certainly been down that road myself where you just sort of want to have everything just, just gone and, 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 and not to associate the memories with it, but it's it's the only reason I asked is because I would be curious to see what your work was like. Maybe your mom has something like scrolled away or? Uh, I mean, maybe some illustrations from, or drawings when I was like four. <laughs> oh, well, that would be perfect then. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That would be a great way for me to, to gauge. Um, no, yeah. but I okay. Um, So like, okay, so you, you were, you know, doing your personal pieces. How did Pathfinder discover you? So, uh, are you familiar with ArtStation? I am familiar with ArtStation. Yeah, so apparently, and I, I knew this, but I wasn't really a recipient of this knowledge back then, but uh, an art director found my work uh, oh, through ArtStation. Really? And then- So, uh, that, would, that, that side works, it works. Uh, well, absolutely. I would say that um, I probably get 75 to 80 percent of any job lead almost through that website shout out art station yep wow so it not then, be the same for everybody else but that's been my experience i haven't heard anybody i mean everybody's on and i haven't heard anybody say anything like negative about it let's just say yeah neither have i um, so you also, what, I, what I, I love is that I interviewed Donato, um, you took a class with him, you took one of the uh, classes where you were sort of working with him. Um, what were the lessons that he taught you, or some of the lessons that he taught you that you, that you as an artist now just absolutely treasure? Because I'm sure you, I know you learned a lot because he's just such a great teacher and he's mentored so many people, but what are some pieces that you took away that, that made your art go to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a great experience. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe life giving me the opportunity to do a mentorship like that again. I mean, I'm by no means have arrived, I feel, uh, with my art and you can always, you can always learn more. Um, so yeah, but I would say, um, he really challenged the way that I approach color um, with not trying to be so um, local with color and then just brushing one area with just one, one shade of one color or but being it free to, you know, experiment and, that, and accept the fact that there is no right color as long as your values are correct, which is a really hard thing to wrap your mind around sometimes because you think you know in your head what color something should be 
but when you take a really careful look at it, you know, it's all these colors interacting together and vibrating off each other. So yeah, it's, that was probably the biggest thing. Now, when you say local with color, what for a layman, what does that, that mean? So, I mean, uh, if you look at an orange, an orange just isn't orange. I mean, there's yellows in there. There's, you know, there can be reds and, uh, and so, or an apple, I mean, an apple just isn't red. There's, right. There's yellows and greens and browns and all these things. And so when you paint those things, um, you don't just paint an apple red. You can throw all these colors together. And then they, when you look at it up close, it looks like a mess. But when you zoom out, uh, it can look, a, it can look really cool. Okay. Okay. Or, or look, or look right. So to speak. I gotcha. I gotcha. And you, you say that Donato was also a big a re reason he was the, sort of your end to, to magic as well? Yeah. So through Smarter Art School, um, one of the things they have is at the end of each um, internship is they have a, um, a guest come in to evaluate your art or to look at your art and maybe give critique. And um, one of the reasons one of the reasons why I chose his class was because I knew that um, at some point, uh, Don Murren, who was an art director for Magic, would be coming in. And, um, and she happened to see my work and uh, she liked what she saw. And out of that, I basically got a job offer right there on the spot, so to speak. So it was really cool. Had you been playing Magic uh, before? Had Did you play when you were younger or was this something that you never uh, really d did? I'm embarrassed to say it. I'm one of those artists who hasn't had a chance to play. Oh, there's tons I, of you out. There's tons of artists that play. Uh, and, and I always want to say I want the time to learn how to do it, but I swear to God, I mean... It's a lot. Where it do is. I find where do I find the time anymore? <laughs> you're not gonna be. I mean, like, here's the deal. If you're, you're, I mean, if you're stretched for time as it is, magic is a very time-consuming hobby. And so I always say to the artist, I'm like, you don't have to feel bad about not playing the game since you're spending your time making art for it. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I do. I do like. Uh, I do like watching people play it. So you know, when I'm doing some work, you know, I'll put something on the second monitor and and just watch games go on just to stay. I mean, you got to know the mechanics of the game. Yeah. And I'm continuing uh, to learn exactly uh, how that unfolds in certain cards and, and what art directors are looking for. Uh, I got myself into trouble with my first few cards, maybe not knowing exactly um, what the art director was looking for or what the card needed to be to fit the color and maybe the mechanics of it. Okay, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, that one got me into trouble. Yeah, because he made him like he was the yellow hue was the original. Yeah, the the magic or the the color of the spell that he was casting was yellow, which looked friggin' amazing in terms of the art because I had everything balanced. And then um, uh, Don came back and said, "Yeah, this needs to be blue," <laughs> which of course now the entire card was blue. So I'm like, "Oh my god, how do I? I can't have this entire." painting just be blue so i think i threw a moon up in the sky and made that yellow and, and tried to do some other balancing so i mean it it looks good i don't think it turned out i don't think it turned out bad in fact it seems to be one of your more uh like recognizable pieces uh, or at least amongst the people have been talking about it in fact is it true i mean do you think that the rousing reed art is it seems like it's a direct sequel to your piece uh, which one's that Rousing Reed, it looks like the same wizard is now up in the air with the books Oh, yeah, you're doing like a backflip or something over? Yeah, yeah, is that, do you, do you know? know I do know that, because I, I happened to, uh, I was on ArtStation one day, and I was just, you know, browsing through, I'm like, this, that art looks familiar. I mean, that looks like my character. Yeah, and same I, alleyway and everything. And I'm like, first, at first I didn't know it was actual magic art, because I was just looking at the thumbnail. I'm like, did this person just rip off my art? And then I clicked on it and realized it was official magic work. And I'm like, oh, okay. So the art director is wanting to continue the story here. And I ended up, con I ended up contacting that artist. I'm like, hey, 
uh, I really like what you did because, you know, it's an extension of, of what I did. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so yeah, the art director had provided him with my painting as his uh, reference material. So oh, that's got to be pretty flattering, right? Yeah, I, yeah, it was pretty cool. And I know uh, that's happened with other artists as well that, you know, kind of their work can be an extended extended mm -hmm. on through other artwork. So and um, um, now it's now where I think you really seem to uh, seem to take off or at least really get a lot of work with Steros. Um, and I feel like that was a really good fit for you because of your personal pieces like Starbather, like that looks like it could be a card in Theros, like right Yeah. I mean, and when you were doing the work for that, do you feel like that was maybe a good fit? Do you feel like that was the best fit for you so far as like, let's go, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, Theros, uh, I really love that set, I think. So leading up to that, I mean, I'm still trying to build up my confidence as a magic illustrator and I'm only taking on, you know, one card at a time. And eventually I kind of got to the point where I really felt comfortable. And this was before, this was before having two children. We only had one. And so I had all this time, which I now no longer have. And so I'm like, yeah, okay. I feel good to take on, you know, um, two illustrations at a time. And then Don came and said, you know, could you take on a third? So, which is for me, having a full-time job and doing that amongst other things was, was a big risk for me, but I think it, I was really in the groove at that point and I was able to kind of flow through, through each one. So, and I really liked just the subject matter of that, of that block. Um, I thought it really just fit me well. And so I think they turned out really well. Yeah, I mean, like, well, for instance, like, uh, like memory, Jane, behind me. Um, now, what did the prompt say for that card? Like, what was, what were the directions that you got? Because it's, it mentioned some character who I, I don't think you know anything about, and I'm pretty sure that the character is a male. Um, but this, in your piece, it looks like to be, at least from my impressions, a female. Um, what was the uh, direction behind that? What were you trying to convey with it? If I can remember that, that was like two years ago or two and a half years ago now. Um, I think the prompt was having the close up of an eye and having this swirling kind of magic coming out of it. Or, like, you know what? I honestly can't remember. I just remember it being a, a close up of an eye. But where I wanted to take it was, you know, what is the emotion behind? losing your memory so in this in this point of this illustration i mean where you're sitting right now you're kind of covering up that tear that's pouring out of that eye and i wanted to capture that moment where this character is, is realizing oh my something's happening here and everything i know is disappearing and so i wanted to and uh i think if you expand upon the art you can kind of see the the eyebrows kind of kind yeah. of curl up there like oh like what, what's going on here and everything's that I know is being sucked out of me. And then in the background there, uh, or the reflection of the pillars of Theros and, and the chains coming down, just to give you context for where this is happening. And do you think it's supposed to be Elspeth? Did you have Elspeth in mind when you did it? Um, I didn't, it didn't specify any character um, specifically. Um, yeah, this just, of course, I from there you, you source the right reference, and I found the right reference and to build my image upon, and, and this kind of all went together. And um, Underworld Dreams it was uh, is awesome, and a big stylistic change for you in a sense that um, you don't at least you tend to be more um, uh, let's say realism is more where you go in a lot of your pieces, but that one has sort of like a, a stretched out kind of like a sort of a surreal a feeling to it what was uh what was your decision to do that that one was a, a huge challenge too because i ended up having to almost repaint that one um so in the thumbnail sketch that i submitted that got approved um compositionally i wanted to highlight that central character and i had this lightning bolt striking behind her to basically backlight her and she really popped but once the illustration was finished, it looked like, you know, she was being 
they were being punished with lightning, which is not the focus of the card. It was, it was just other forms of torment. And so we had to strip out the lightning bolt, which of course changed the entire image and the composition. And I had to kind of thank goodness for, I had a feeling with that card. I don't know why I normally don't do this. I normally paint on as few layers as possible, but something told me to keep as many layers open in Photoshop as possible. So I didn't really collapse anything. So I had a lot of layers to kind of reconfigure the image without having to really repaint it from scratch. So, so that one was a big challenge. It's really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely one of my favorites. And one of the one of the way, ways that you stood out uh, in the game. And then also, how, how did you how did Pendersky uh, come about? That's uh, that's fun. I mean, it's a name yeah. that you see that and you're like, it's sort of like a share or Madonna. It's just a one name kind of thing. Kind of cool. Again, so long story. So I ended up finding out a little bit more about my heritage. And I growing up, I always thought um, I was German, um, a German background, because my mom was. And I ended up finding out later on that my great grandparents were Polish and they uh, they fled the Germans. Uh, they the Germans had attacked their farm and did a bunch of horrific things. And my grandfather managed to escape and he came to Canada. And when changing his name, he changed his family name from Pindersky to Pinder. And so years down the road and, and later on, I found out that information and I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to pay a little bit of homage back to that. So kind of readopting my, my old original family name. So that's why I went with Pindersky as opposed to just Pinder. That's cool. I mean, that's, 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 that's very, that's, that's, uh, I, I get it. I mean, as somebody um, who had also had family that, that fled from that area, I, that's, that's heartfelt. Um, one of the things that you had also said is that you, you talk about how you don't really do personal pieces uh, because there is no reason for you to do them. You're, you're usually doing them for work. But at the same time, though, you have one piece, a dead end, which, if I'm not mistaken, that's a personal piece, correct? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's not ex exactly right. I do personal pieces, but I don't do my personal pieces have a, I want to tell a story with them and I really want to put a lot into them. So I don't, and this is to my detriment, I think, but I don't do a lot of just small pieces. I don't do a lot of studies. I should, I don't do a lot of, you know, uh, really small paintings. Uh, I tend to throw myself and immerse myself into the biggest painting that I can at any one time. And so they take me a long time to do these days. Um, but yeah, but that particular piece, that was a personal one. I think I, I did that one twice. I did uh, one version back in, I think, 2017. And then I redid it uh, back in 2019 with a new skill set, wanting to kind of kind of show off to myself maybe what I had learned and push my perspective and storytelling and yeah yeah but then you did it a third time the, the the finalized version you did the the original version and there was a second version and then you did the one where you take everybody through the steps of what you did which I was that was really fascinating stuff and um yes you have gotten much stronger as a as a virtual visual storyteller and, and as an artist but what, what do you think it was about that piece that, that made you just like you were, you were hooked into it? I don't know. I liked, there was something about the mood of that particular painting that just really gripped me at the time. Um, the idea of being, you know, the character being in that setting and being lost and, um, knowing there's something going on, but not knowing exactly what it is. I mean, her attention is focused elsewhere, hearing something behind her and this ominous green haze, which illuminates her from behind, but in front of her is that mirror with the character approaching her, um, using perhaps a, what's behind her as a distraction to ultimately get her. And then you see that, that well or that cavern in, in front of her and there's 
blood dripping on the floor. So yeah. you know something's about to go down. You don't know if she's going to get out of there alive. Um, I don't know. There was just something about that. Um, that I don't know. That just really pulled me in. Yeah, it's got a Hitchcockian sense of suspense where it's like you don't show you don't show what is going to happen. You show like. For his, he always said the famous one was you show two people sitting and having conversation at a table and then you show underneath the table that there's a bomb going like ticking and going off and then you just focus on them having a conversation meanwhile the audience knows that there's a bomb that's beneath them and it sends everyone into a panic that painting sort of has that same uh feel where you 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 see all these things these horrible horrible things that are you know obviously going to lead to a terrible you know a terrible demise at, at the very least or at the very most yeah. um but you don't get to see it so it is it's not scary it's suspenseful yeah yeah i think so i wanted to uh just create this sense of you know what what's about to happen um and then just kind of leave it there it's not that i think of all the paintings i've done that one's my favorite although which is strange because sometimes um an artist's personal favorite isn't what everybody else likes. So it hasn't, well, yeah. I, hasn't been received as well as some of my other works, which is, I get, but at the same time, you know, my inner artist quietly cries. Oh, well, no, I mean, I, I thought it was really cool. I mean, I get it. You know, it, it's, it's tough when a passion project is not treated with the same, uh, reverence as, as something that say like is more popular uh because it's you know like in magic or in pathfinder and things along those lines but but i got it i i thought it was cool. i thought it was i thought it was cool um now one of the things that you had i kind of i'm just curious because i I'm, I'm totally like in people's business but you wrote on twitter um there have been several occasions where i've reached out to two fellow mtg artists for advice and i wanted to specifically say thank you for your help um and i was saying like is there any way we can find out who they were or if you don't want to say that what was the advice because i just i figured if you put it on twitter kind of sort of is opening himself up to a question so i feel like i'm not being too much of a you know yeah, no worries dick. i mean i don't i'm not afraid to say that <clears throat> so i don't know everything i don't think any artist out there really does um and so when i'm super stuck or really maybe at a crossroads with a painting. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know where, what the hell I'm doing with this damn thing. Um, I certainly have a couple people that I trust and that have been very gracious with their time. And I'm like, well, I'll throw it in front of them and, and show them and they're fellow magic artists so we can share work back and forth with, no, with not breaking any confidentiality agreements. Right, right. Um, and they'll either say, yeah, you're on the right track or maybe they'll do a paint over um it's both ways sometimes i mean sometimes they'll throw me back something too um but to be honest it's probably me more reaching out to them so but yeah well i mean i will say this i've gone going through your twitter you are you are very hard on yourself like we're talking like uh uh expletive filled like just self like beatings and uh i, I you got to be nicer to yourself i mean oh my goodness <laughs> You'll be like, this is such, I'm, I, I couldn't possibly, you know, be as talented as it. I'm just like, oh my God, it was brutal. I was thinking to myself, if he heard somebody talk about like somebody he knew like that way, there'd be a, there'd be a brawl. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what post you're talking to. I, yeah. Oh, there, there's like a ton of them. Are there's there quite really? a few. Oh yeah. You're like, uh, I, I don't want, I, I wouldn't want to pull it up, but yeah, a lot of your, a lot of your posts are very um, self-insulting. -insult, it's a, uh, and then you'll, you'll post somebody else and you'll be like, this is beautiful. And I love it. And I was just like, man, he's so, he's so mean to himself. Yeah. That's not intentional. Uh, it really isn't. It's not, it's not intended. If it, if that is true, what you're saying it is, I'm not, so I can't refute that. Um, it's not intentional and it's not, um, as a strategy to, to be, Hey, woe is me. Feel no, no, I, that's not what I got. But sometimes I just, I really feel like, um, maybe I think it has more to do with where I am in the moment with everything else distracting me or preventing me from doing as much work as I would like and be like, Oh my God, I know these people can do so produce so much work because they have they have a lot of their time differently. And I have, I've come to now accept the fact that 
you know, I used to have 25 hours a week to do art and now I can maybe do 10. And so like, well, then production goes down and I've, I've recently come to grips with that, though it's hard sometimes, but, but yeah, I think that's where a lot of my kind of frustration can stem from. And, um, but I mean, I imagine you'll get a little bit more time, right? When you, your kids are a little bit older and they're not requiring such, you know, uh, constant supervision and, and there's, and of course, you know, with the whole thing that happened with COVID last year that made things, free time was a difficult thing for most parents. I, you, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were pretty fortunate with uh, with that. But our my biggest challenge right now is just sleep. I mean, <laughs> getting up four and five, six to eight times a night with a, a crying baby, like oh, oh my, yeah. that that does not set you up well the next day trying to stay up late and do work. So new, no, new. No, that is, no. I mean, that's I. Well, hats off to all the parents that you guys do that. I mean, like it. It seems it. You, I feel like you get a supercharge. You get like a dad power where like. As somebody who doesn't have kids, I don't have access to it, but there's a certain amount of adrenaline I think is coursing through everyone's body when they be, when they have a new baby in the house. Because I'm just like I would be, I would be a puddle. It it can be rough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, a lot of caffeine, <laughs> uh, probably unhealthy doses of caffeine, but I'm doing what I can do to to kind of be productive. But yeah, I definitely think if I could give any advice to young or to any artist is to you know put in the work when you have the time i mean the only reason i can do what i can do now is because when we didn't have kids you know i sunk in you know you know that thousand hours or those two thousand hours of, of study and, and hard work at the beginning if i had to do it now in my certain life circumstances i honestly don't think i'd be able to do it just because the time isn't there and you need to put the time in in order to to get better so well it seems like you made it in like you made it in and you have to it, and it's really impressive because not a lot of people in their mid-30s do not just do a career shift or a a, a shift where they're breaking it into entirely a uh, new um uh, just an entirely new career path but but to do, to do it in one that is statistically sort of uh, pretty much impossible to break into even at any age. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's such a small percentage. You have to be, uh, you have to be proud of that. I am. I, I, I'm really proud of that. And there's, there are a few times when young, in my younger days as an artist, so yeah, like uh, before I kind of got into magic, I thought I was good enough to get into magic. And, you know, I submitted my portfolio to the um, art drop at Magic. And, you know, I didn't hear anything. Did a bunch more paintings, resubmitted, didn't hear anything. I'm like, am I not? Am I not good enough? And then um, I really, that's where my self-criticism really began to stem from. Um, I don't know exactly where I heard it. Uh, but I started to adopt the mentality of being my own worst critique and really being hard on myself and trying to put my work up against the artists that I truly did look up to. And that honestly is when I really started to uh, make a lot of big gains. Um, I started to produce maybe less work, but it was higher quality work because I was right. taking the time to really, if something didn't work, I realized nothing is sacred that's painted. Well, redo it until you kind of get it right. Um, I mean, they always say, like, if you want to be better, like in sports, they say, if you want to get better at a sport, you if you're playing tennis, you play tennis against somebody who's going to kick your ass. Well, absolutely. Then, yep. And same with, you know, music, arts, whatever. I mean, if you want to be better, try to be like somebody who is clearly better than you. And, and, and that's how you do it. But I, I understand the, the notion of when I've a lot of times, at least for me personally as well, when, when you do the self-deprecation or the self-insult, I think it's because of the fear that if I say this worst possible thing about myself, it's already been said. And that takes the power away from somebody who is, you know, might say that about, you know, me. And, and it never seems to happen. Nobody ever says that horrible thing that you end up, you know, vocalizing, which is where I was just, I just wanted to say like, you, you, you really should just, uh, 
be super proud because it's it's an incredible story. I mean, it just it doesn't happen. Like, oh, I, I, I mean, it's I don't think I've known anybody who is broken into a, a lifelong pursuit. It's 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 sort of cool because you thought back when you were younger, I'm good enough for magic, and as it turns out, you were right. Yeah, that that was my goal. Um, well, probably my first goal when kind of starting back, I think it was back in 2015-ish, if I remember the dates correctly. As I get older, my memory gets worse. Oh, yeah. That's kind of when I, I think I first started to get into illustration, or was it 2014, whatever. Um, first, I, first, what draw me in was seeing like the, the legend of the cryptids art. And that just, that blew my mind. Um, and then I began to be exposed to things that I just wasn't exposed to uh, before and seeing a lot of the, the magic art that would start to come out. Like, this is wild. I mean, this is really where I'd like to push myself. And one thing led to another, seeing YouTube videos from Darken. Um, I mean, he, seeing those videos was probably what pushed me over the edge. I'm like, being a graphic designer and already knowing Photoshop like the back of my hand, I didn't have that obstacle, right? Okay, okay. So some of the things that I've learned as a graphic designer have carried over. Um, you know, being able to take uh, um, criticism and being able to take, you know, uh, revision requests uh, graciously and, and, and doing them quickly um, and not copying an attitude. Which, uh, which I've heard some artists like to do. Yeah, it can happen. So, uh, yeah, I've really tried to stay, to carry as much from what I've learned in graphic design into, into my art. So some things have, have paid off. Well, that makes sense because, yeah, if you, uh, if you, um, you, you were able to, to handle it in a professional manner and have the professional expertise, that, that's, that, that, that makes sense. That sort of bridges a little bit of the gap of how you were able to do such an uh, impressive like sort of jump into to working into the into the magic art. Um, well, the this will be my last question, but I want I always love to know. Do you? I know you cannot just uh, you can't disclose any specifics, but do you have any cards that you are working on that are coming in out in upcoming magic sets? And if so, how many? I have. I only have two coming out for Forgotten Realms, and uh, one of them I'm really proud of. Because actually, it's probably a bit of a self-portrait. Okay. Welcome to this card. It just really fit. Uh, so I'm really proud of this one particular painting. Um, and there are, yeah, not as much as Theros. I think I was only able to take one piece of illustration per art wave. So not as much as, as some artists out there. But I got to be happy with what I can do. Right. So are you, there's uh, none in the Innistrad sets or uh, coming up? Uh, or? Yes, actually. Uh, four, I believe, for Innistrad. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, you know, I mean, hey, as long as you're in, you know, and you, I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like, if they're asking you back, then that's, that's a good thing. It is good. Yeah. It, it can be, and it happens at times, but it can be a little scary sometimes when um, I think I was, I was pretty early on with my work in magic and I got skipped for a couple waves and I began to wonder, Oh my goodness, did I screw up? Did I do something wrong? Did, did these paintings not work? And uh, lo and behold, it, I got overlooked for, I think two or three waves. And then it's been a regular thing ever since, but yeah, yeah I, I was questioning myself there for a little while. Yeah, I feel like though with it seems like with magic they the, the they don't and it's it if they never use you again it's it's for a very clear reason. I feel like they they sort of make it known that you're no longer going to be doing art. Uh, it seems that they there's always a way to get back in and I'm loving it the seeing the older artists getting sort of their their come the, the not come up and but just sort of uh, getting the attention they deserve with some of the secret layer drops that are coming out yeah. that so you know I, I don't think that they should they close the door unless somebody gives them a reason where yeah. they yeah yeah in the moment in the moment I didn't know that as yeah. I've gotten older I've begun to realize that so yeah well, it was. It's been awesome to. Uh, it's been awesome to talk to you, and I appreciate this. And I'm sorry to kind of cut it short, but this rainstorm is. I'm worried that I'm going to lose everything, and then it will just. 
and that's okay. My kids are about to break in the door, so we're good. All right. Well, you you have fun. <laughs> All right. Nice yeah. talking to you. Cheers. Bye. Talk about inspiring, right? It reminds you that it's never too late to change your life. Oh, and also, I just found out that the like button is not on the keyboard. It's on the screen. And you don't have to literally smash it like I might have done with a hammer. Which I feel is a mistake everybody probably has made. I mean, who would honestly use hyperbole when the word click is perfectly suitable? Anyway, that's all for now. Until next time, I got a scoop and uh, get a new computer monitor. <laughs>